<sighs> but yeah, <laughs> that's kind of my observations. Observations on Sin. I think he'll be good. He looks fun. I uh, uh, it seems like people are having fun with him, which I think is great. I think it's it's more important to me. I think that a character is enjoyable rather than good, right? There's tons of characters who are like bad. I used to be. I used to be the guy. Who, when I played League of Legends, I loved playing all the, just the abortion dumpster characters. I would play, like, old Yorick, old Poppy, old, like, old, old Mordekaiser. They had to rework that champion, like, two times to make him into anything. Well, because the first rework was fucking stupid. I don't know what they were thinking. They got, they were on some fucking cocaine when they did that, that first Mordekaiser rework. But, like, original Mordekaiser? When he was, like, this weird drain tank where like you never really knew what was happening because like he built up this shield but the shield wasn't visible on his health bar so he would just like his health bar would just be completely static during a fight it was really weird but it was fun and you got to like, keep a ghost of the opponent if you killed them with your ultimate on them oh that was that was so much fun because it felt like you were cl i was climbing this uphill battle <laughs> just this uh, this long road to make the character work but when it worked it was like yeah Oh my god, what are the other- Gal- Oh, I fucking love Galio. I love Galio. They did not need to rework that character. Maybe like a little touch-up to his ability, sure, but completely reworking him into a lame, annoying support. That was- that was one of the things that really like, really started turning me off the league, was like, Why are you killing my babies? <laughs> Galio was so fun as like a counter- if they had a, a, a magic damage top laner and mid laner, you could pick Galio and you could do really good. He was like a magic damage counter where he would get, uh, he was, he, he used magic damage and you would, the more magic resistance you built, he would get, the portion of that would, would be converted or he would get that as like a bonus to his own like ability power. It was basically how the character worked. And he had some like really fun abilities. Like his ultimate was a big AOE taunt thing that had a big explosion at the end. People would, were really surprised because you would never see this character because people who play League, they, I don't know, don't have to play the... <sighs> Characters? I feel like character was frustrating in League was that I felt like so many people didn't want to like think about the game at all and they would just like... <sighs> if something required you to think even a little bit about what kind of a pick it was, they would just... Uh, Ugh, it was unplayable. But man, Galio was so fun. If you picked him into a good... And he was never bad. At least when I played him. For like a good couple of years. In like, you know, 20, 2014, 2015, 2016. Onwards to like 2020. I kind of played to like 2020. Um, he was never bad. He was just niche. And he was really fun when you could make him work. Poppy. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, oh my jalopy the poppy. Poppy was what a character. Okay, so people who didn't never played League, people who never played League, um, or only started playing like post when did she get reworked? Like 2015, 16, something like that. So Poppy was this character who was a completely failed design. <laughs> just just absolute failure. Uh I think they wanted her to be like a bruiser kind of like brawler type character. She's a little yordle, little blue yordle with like a hammer and armor. What ended up really being the character was she ended up playing like an absurd assassin who did ri <laughs> ridiculous burst damage and it could fucking kill you in like two seconds. Um, which back in the heyday of League was very rare. Um, damage got r shot way up as the game went on. Uh, there was a lot of power creep throughout the game's lifespan, but before, uh, it was kind of rare to see someone like at, like champion who just consistently blow people up, like full health bar gone in a second type of thing. And that was Poppy. Uh, most of her abilities were very boring. Uh, it was just like, oh, she has a Q. Her Q would like empower your next auto attack. Her W, like every moment you were in combat, you gained some like defensive stats and it stacked up to like 10 times. Her E was like the most, one of the most iconic things that they, it was like the only thing they actually kept, which was she would charge the opponent and then uh, kind of like carry them backwards a little bit. Like if she would hit them and then they would, uh, she would 
carry them forward, and if you slammed into a wall, you would stun them. It was like the only thing they kept when they reworked her. And her ultimate was so dumb. It was called Political Immunity, which I love that name. It was called Political Immunity. And she would cast it on someone, uh, on an enemy champion, and you could only... While the, the, the ability was on them, you could only be affected by them. They were the only people who could do damage or could put any kind of crowd control effects on you. It was silly. No one else could touch you. So what she would do is uh, you would basically make... You would go to a team fight, ult, like, the most useless person on the team. Like, if someone was just feeding really badly, or they were, like, a tank who was all, like, damn... Or was, like, he wasn't really doing that much, uh, or something like that. Or sometimes you could just ult the carry or whatever, and just make... You just make a beeline for whoever was the big carry, and then you could just... He fucking couldn't do anything to you. It was so fun. It was so funny and really poorly designed. It's basically, like, a modern ver... A version of, like, the modern Mordekaiser's ultimate, except instead of taking you to, like, the 1v1 dimension, uh, it was... It was just regular. You would just... It's 1v1 time, baby. <laughs> um... Oh, her passive? Her passive was dumb. And it wasn't interesting, but it was dumb. So it was, uh, basically, if you did, if she would take damage from a, if she would take, like, a chunk of damage, let's say, from an ability, and it dealt more than, I think, 10% of her current health, anything over the 10% mark would be reduced by half. So if you hit her and it would deal like 20% of her health, it would actually do um, 15, I think is how the math would work out on that. So like the lower your health would get, she would just take like less and less damage. It was it was basically like guts. It was like fucking guts from Guilty Gear. Um, and she was dumb. She was really, really dumb. Because uh, she could do a ridiculous amount of damage with her Q, which was boring. A boring ability, but you could do a ton of damage, and she would basically be, like, un really difficult to kill. Uh, and you could just pop out, stun someone with your E by slamming them into a wall, and then just pop, 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 and just destroy them. So what they did to try and counter this um, was basically they, they, they riot to fix this. They, did, they didn't fix it. They were like, this is too much of, a, of an issue. Just fucking break her legs. <laughs> So what they did was, essentially, the ba the only balance changes they made to Poppy was they just made, oh, I think the specific thing was they made her mana costs insane, insanely high, which at the end, like in the middle or the end of the game when you have like a higher maximum mana bar, uh, not a huge issue, but in the early game when you've got like 400 mana to work with and casting one spell is like 90 mana. She had like Dota mana costs. Uh, yeah, basically she like, she could not do shit early game. They just, they just, <laughs> like, they, they, fuck, they neutered her early game. She was useless. But if you could make it past the early fate part of the game, and you could like kind of play safe and just sort of like go neutral in lane or something like that. And you could make it to two items. If you could get like two items, like a Triforce and like something else, like an Infinity Edge, Infinity Edge or yeah, Infinity Edge or something like that. Uh, or or uh, Blade of the Ruin King. You could, oh, oh, I remember like it didn't work many times. Most of the times I would get destroyed in lane because I couldn't fight back against a lot of characters but when it worked when it when it went off it was disgust it was like i remember playing her and being like oh yeah they could never this could never be allowed <laughs> this could never be allowed to work that was like some of the most fun uh eventually i sort of did move on to a slightly more stable characters I was, uh, my favorite champion in League, it, it was and continues to be Mundo. I freaking love Mundo. Uh, let's see, what were my favorite champions in League for anyone who was asking? Uh, for anyone who would want to know. It was Mundo. I love Renekton, uh, because I love being an asshole. Uh, uh, I love Tom Kench. I love Jin. 
uh, probably my favorite 80 carry next to Twitch. I love Twitch. I love being a little rat man and uh, being a stupid hyper carry late in the game and just popping out and <laughs> just machine gunning someone down. Oh, that was so fun. Uh, that might be, I really enjoyed Set. He was released around the time I stopped playing, uh, but I really enjoyed him. I think he would be really fun to play in Project L. Uh, I really liked Nocturne near the end of when I stopped playing. I stopped playing around the time they introduced Lethality. Ooh, you want to hear something fun? So, okay, I want to talk about Nocturne Top. I used to take... Uh, so Nocturne, for anyone who doesn't know, is a character in League of Legends who was kind of considered, like... His biggest issue was that he was too honest. He didn't have any really broken shit like a lot of other characters. Um, like, none of his abilities, like, were just straight up busted, you know? Um, so that kind of kept him in this, like, yeah, you can play him, but, like, is he gonna... Eh, he's not... He's not, he's not gonna, like, carry the game. And he was mostly played... Excuse me. As a jungler, which is a roaming position where you uh, basically, instead of going to one of the main lanes, you uh, there's there's in between the lanes there's an area called the jungle, which is where there's like monster camps and stuff, and you basically rely on that as your main source of experience and gold, as opposed to killing minions in lane. And then you kind of roam around and basically set up uh, ganks, like little ambushes, and and you basically help out the other lanes. You're the you're the global force roaming around, hiding in the shadows. Um, so he was usually played as a jungler. And in the jungle, he was like... <sighs> okay, so here's what I deduce, because I would always just take a character top lane because I just love playing top lane, and because it's the most solitary lane where I don't have to deal with other people. Uh, and I liked a lot of the characters who went top. <laughs> uh, can you see why I moved over to just playing fighting games? Um... So, I decided to take Nocturne top, and what I discovered was that Nocturne was, like, an incredible early game duelist. Like, maybe one of the best in the game, and, like, level two. Absurdly good. Essentially, Nocturne really likes doing a slashy slash. He's like a he's like a shadow man in a suit of armor, but he has like no lower half. It's like a trailing shadow wisp. Um in a suit of armor with his like arm blades. So he really likes to just do slashy slash basic attacks on you. His the main thing that that brought this all together was his passive, which was on a cooldown, but when it was off cooldown, it was like a 10-second cooldown or something like that, and you could reduce it by auto-attacking more. Uh, you would... Whenever you auto-attacked, it would do, like, damage around you. It would do, like, AoE damage, and it would heal you for a portion of the of the damage dealt. Second thing was his E ability, which this basically tether he would attach onto an enemy... You know, just any enemy. And then um, it would, like, suck life from them. And then... Uh, what, did it suck life? I have to look that up, or does it just do damage? Um, it's not really, like, super important. Uh, where the heck is... I actually have to look up. League of Legends. Um, why is this taking so long to load? Uh, basically, the important part of the ability... What does it do? Dealing damage each second. No, okay, so it does, doesn't, doesn't suck health or anything. It's not like a lifesteal type move uh, but it does damage each second the damage isn't important what's important is that it's basically so you can act during it you're not just like you don't just hunker down during it you attach this tether to them if you keep the tether from breaking so if you keep close enough to them at the end of like a little like a two second channel um while, while you're channeling it they get feared and when you fear them they have to walk away so they walk in the opposite direction from you like, with greatly reduced movement speed. It's basically a stun where they're very slowly moving, essentially. When you combine that with... Uh, really, the only other thing you needed to make the, this this strategy work was his Q, which was he would throw out this little, like, 
claw projectile and there'd be like a shadow trail behind it and being on the shadow trail would like speed you up and if it hit an enemy champion they would leave a little shadow trail for a few seconds wherever they walked so basically the 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 plan was you go to lane uh you keep it in the middle you don't like push super hard until you get level two so you get your e and your q and then you basically just do i would just do an all in where i would just like start autoing them and like go them into fighting me and everyone would always take the fight and then i would put my e on them and then just just the um there was also like some fucking runes that i remember taking specifically like to boost attack speed or something like that i forget how that stuff worked it's been so long but essentially all the stuff combined to where if he can just auto attack you for long enough he can kill like anyone that early in the game when you have like no items to boost your stats so you would put your e i would put my e on them they would get feared now that i have like an extra two seconds to just wail on them and if they start running then uh, it, it was even better if like you could I could like position myself so that they would get feared in the direction of my tower. So they would have to like walk an even further distance to to like run away from me. Then I would like throw my Q on them and then just run after them to finish them off. And you could get like a kill at level two so consistently as long as they took that fight, which they almost always did. It was really good. Here's the problem. So Nocturne, one of the stats that he did really well with. Uh, because he likes to auto attack a lot is um, that really makes him like would make him really powerful is um, armor penetration so armor penetration is when you're auto attacking someone or basic attacking same thing uh, it reduces a percentage of their armor which is your physical defense the issue with this because well, it, this is a good stat for him because he likes to auto a lot and so he's reducing your defenses the problem is that armor penetration is a late game stat because it's percentage based and 10 percent armor penetration like armor reduction is way more effective when they have a hundred armor or 30 armor versus 10. if they have like 30 armor that's, uh, uh, what's 30 divided by 10? It's 3. Hang on. I'm just trying to think of if this was... What I'm trying... If you could probably figure it out for, on your own. I'm not going to embarrass myself more than I already have trying to do math on the fly. Um, <clears throat> so you could, like, reduce their armor way more if it's based off of a higher percentage or not a higher percentage fuck if there's a higher total you're getting you're taking a higher percentage off of it doesn't matter i'm really bad at explaining math stuff but it, I, I know i understand it but i'm trying to explain it so they added this so so the, the issue with this for nocturne is this is a really good stat on him because he likes to auto attack but it doesn't really do anything for him early in the game when he's really really good at dueling so it only kind of benefits him when he's sort of starting to maybe get a little less effective towards the end of the game uh, when people actually have a lot of armor because they have more items. Then they added a new stat called Lethality. Lethality is flat armor reduction. So it's not 10% of the opponent's armor. It's 10% of their armor. Sorry, it's, it's not 10% of their armor. It's 10 armor flat. And that is way bigger at the beginning of the game when you don't have that much armor. Because if you have, like, 30 armor, you're taking off 10 armor. Oh, shit, compared to, like, you know, if this was armor penetration, you'd be taking off 3 armor, something like that. And that makes a big difference. So what you could do is you would take this level 2, um, you take this level 2 fight, get the kill, uh, probably freeze lane or something for a second, or, or keep it in the middle, back to base, buy like two long swords which should give you 50 uh, attack damage which was uncontestable early game if you have two long swords and they don't and they just have their starter items and they probably could only buy like maybe a health pot or something like that uh because you just killed them and you got a kill and you probably got some more farm after that uh you're coming into lane way stronger than they are then you get to turn that into your uh lethality item which you turn into your your finished lethality item later on and you just start snowballing so hard and like you just 
run the early and mid game. And fucking, oh my god, I remember just hard carrying games. Uh, where, like, by the end of the game, I was literally, like, I remember this one game where I was, like, full build. I was I was hard carrying at least, like, two people on this team. And I fought every single member of the enemy team one by one because they I was, like, trying to backdoor them. And they were like, oh, shit, so they all start running towards me on like bottom lane or something but they don't get there at the same time they didn't they didn't leave at the same time so like i am get i have just enough time to duel each one and kill them in like five they're getting they're getting to me like five seconds apart and i'm killing every single one of them within like four seconds and it's just enough it's just enough that i can actually go through every single one of them <laughs> it was so cool that shit was fun too bad League of Legends sucks. And it's lame. Ah. 